So one of the more unique aspects of living in the United States is that we have a particularly strong sense of justice. Whether you're young or old, rich or poor, smart or dumb, you can get your day in court if you feel you've been wrong. Suing one another is as American as apple pie or baseball. But since this is also a country of extremes, that means that there are some extremely dumb lawsuits out there. And the beer industry is certainly no exception to this trend. Hey, this is Ryan with Beer by the Numbers, and today we're going to play Judge. Not for any case that has any weight or legitimacy. That would take years of law school and way more studying than my beer brattered brain can handle. No, today we're going to judge the merits of three ridiculous beer lawsuits that never should have gotten time in any court of law because frankly, the people suing these beer companies are just dumb. So grab your black roads and powdered wigs and leave a like down below and let's get started. Now when you buy yourself a six pack of ice cold beers, you would expect to get six nice frothy delicious brews when you and your buddies decide to crack them open. Well one day, a California man cracked open a can of beer and after taking a sip, he immediately pronounced it flat. Now, a normal person may have lamented the 75 cents lost on that flat beer and simply moved on to their next can. But not this man. The honor of beer needed to be defended. So he went back to the liquor store where he got the offending can, but they refused to give him a fresh can or give him his money back. So he did what any self-respecting guy who lost 75 cents would have done. Spent $20 and several hours going to small claims court. But he didn't pick just any California small claims court to be the battleground. This was the People's Court, TV's first major attempt at finding justice for the common man. The People's Court was presided over by Joseph Wapner, and it was a major TV hit. It was syndicated in over 200 cities and 20 countries. People just couldn't get enough of arguing about which side was right and who was wrong. To his credit, Judge Joe Wapner wasn't exactly handling cases that were heavy on monetary damages, but they were definitely heavy on principle. So put yourself in the shoes of the everyman's television judge. What would you do if a man came in and complained he was sold a bad beer? and a liquor store owner claiming they did nothing wrong. How would you rule? Well, Judge Wapner figured that the man wasn't lying because if he was, why would a liar spend the $20 to sue the liquor store just to get 75 cents? That doesn't make any sense for someone who is lying, but it does make sense for a man who had been wronged and his flat beer. And really, what's worse than a flat beer? So in this case, the California man was given his 75 cents, and justice for flat beers everywhere was served. Who doesn't love a good beer commercial? They have some great shots of beers being poured and people having a lot of fun. And while these days there are a lot more beards being featured than in the past, but in the late 80s and 90s, beer commercials looked a lot more like this. Yeah, there's a lot more raw sexual energy coming off this ad. And I guess why not, as the old school marketing adage goes, sex sells. Uh, but besides being a little strange by today's standards, I think everyone can recognize that drinking a lot of Budweiser does not mean you'll be making out with a hot woman in the rain anytime soon. Well, almost everyone recognizes this, and that's where our next ridiculous lawsuit comes into play. Richard Overton watched a lot of TV, always seeing a flurry of beer commercials come across the screen as he watched all his favorite sports programs. And seeing all those nice looking women fawning over pretty average looking guys inspired Mr. Overton to grab a case of Budweiser in order to solve all of life's problems. To no one's surprise, nothing happened. No nice beaches, no Clydesdale horse rides, and definitely no bikini contest judging gigs in his life. To make matters worse, Mr. Overton found that beer actually had some negative health effects on the mind and body. He was absolutely shocked by these revelations, and so he did what any self-respecting American would do, sued Anheuser-Busch for a ton of money. 
Let's take a look at the case docket from the Michigan Court of Appeals circa 1993. On June 6, 1991, plaintiffs sued defendant, a brewer and seller of beer and malt liquor, claiming that defendant had violated the provisions of the PAA by placing before the public advertisements for its products that contain statements and or representations that are untrue, deceptive, or misleading. As a result, the plaintiff claimed he and the general public had been led to consume the defendant's products, which the defendant knew were dangerous and likely to cause serious health problems, including addiction and death. Basically, Mr. Overton was claiming that Anheuser-Busch had violated a Michigan state law against deceptive advertising, but not disclosing in their ads that alcohol has some negative side effects. Continuing on, in support of his claims, Plaintiff pointed to the defendant's television advertisements featuring Bud Light as the source of fantasies coming to life. Fantasies involving tropical settings, beautiful women, and men engaged in unrestricted merriment. Plaintiff sought monetary damages in excess of $10,000, alleging the defendant's misleading advertisements had caused him physical pain and mental injury, emotional distress, and financial loss. Although Mr. Overton had a tough time defining how exactly he was injured and what his financial loss was, he was adamant that he had been wronged. Meanwhile, Anheuser-Busch argued that they were under no obligation to disclose the dangers of overconsumption under Michigan law. They cited many previous cases where companies were not required to disclose the dangers of misuse of their products. Think like car companies not being required to warn you not to drive drunk. So. Now that you have the facts of this case, who would you rule for? Well, in this case, and to no one's real surprise, the Michigan courts decided to rule in favor of Anheuser-Busch for two main reasons. First, they concluded that the beer ads in question did not constitute fraud by using nice locations and good-looking people. A reasonable person would not expect such things to be delivered by a beer company when purchasing a six-pack of Bud Light. Second, the court agreed with Anheuser-Busch that they didn't need to disclose the dangers of alcohol abuse in their ads, just like car companies don't need to disclose the consequences of speeding, or travel agents don't need to say that plane crashes can happen. Here's a quote from their ruling. Because the dangers inherent in the consumption of beer are well known to the general public, nothing material was concealed. Defendant has no duty under common law or subsection 6 of the PAA to disclose in its advertisements damages that are already well known. Therefore, Mr. Overton's case was dismissed. It's unknown if he ever found the beautiful beer drinking woman of his dreams, however. Moving on to the next crazy lawsuit on our docket, we go to the state of Idaho, where in 2013, five inmates at the Idaho State Correctional Institution sued national beer and wine companies for $1 billion. They claimed that alcohol was responsible for their life of crime, and they were not sufficiently warned about alcohol's addictive properties. Inmates did not have an attorney and drafted the litigation themselves. Keith Brown, who pleaded guilty to voluntary manslaughter, filed the suit and wrote, At no time in my life prior to me becoming an alcoholic was I ever informed that alcohol was habit-forming and addictive. Keith's co-plaintiff, Jeremy Brown, claims he would not have started drinking had he known that alcohol was habit-forming. He was drunk when he seriously injured someone in a shooting, and his affidavit states that if he had not been an alcoholic, it never would have happened. The companies targeted by this lawsuit are Miller Brewing Company, Anheuser-Busch Company, Adolphus Coors Company, Brown Furman Company, American Brands Incorporated, Pepsi-Cola, RJR Nabisco, Gallo's Winery, Ernest Gallo, and Julio Gallo. None of them responded to this suit, and I really don't even have to ask you to judge this one because it was so poorly set up that the Idaho courts did not even feel the need to give this one a hearing. Well, these guys may have had a point. You can't just sue every company that's ever made an alcoholic beverage for a billion plus dollars and expect that your claims will be taken seriously by any court. One final bonus lawsuit for your judgment today. This one, not quite as ridiculous. In 2013, U.S. drinkers of Beck's Lager sued Anheuser-Busch InBev as the packaging of beer emphasized its German quality and noted it was made under the German Purity Law of 1516 and that the product originated in Bremen, Germany. 
Most customers had assumed for a long time that this was a nice imported brand of beer. But ever since 2012, the beer had been brewed in St. Louis, Missouri at AB InBev's mega brewing facility there. There was some US made language on the packaging and bottles, but it was difficult to find. For example, a Beck's drinker had to turn a 12 pack upside down to find the country of origin on the box's bottom in a very small fine print. If you want to see if this was found to be a legitimate case of misleading consumers, and if Beck's drinkers want any money from the beer giant, check the link in the description down below. And while you're down there, why not leave a like on this video? It makes great beer content more widely available for beer nerds here on YouTube. Once again, this has been Ryan with Beer by the Numbers, and I'll be back next week with more judgmental beer content.